Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello there, you wonderful pet parents. Thank you so much for joining me again this week on the Pet Parenting Reset. I'm Jessica Fisher, in case you do not know who I am, I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. And on this podcast, on all of our social media, I provide you different methods for pet parenting success. We are talking about positive reinforcement training, enrichment, behavior modification, nutrition, holistic, uh, health and even some homeopathic health. I am very, very interested in homeopathic health lately and uh, learning so much more about that. So I hope that interests you as well. This week we are talking, we are in part two of the seven miracle steps to training your dog or really any animal because these same um, principles apply. They are very foundational. If you have not listened to last week, uh, last week's episode, let me get my notes here. Go back to last week. Um, we talked about the first four last week. And here's the thing. I definitely want you to go back and check those four things out because all seven, like I had a hard time narrowing it down to seven. So all seven of these are incredibly important. They are very foundational. And they are also, I wrote a book about the seven miracle steps. It is the seven miracle steps to get your dog to obey commands, even if they've failed before. And here's the deal, guys. You can get a digital copy of the book for like five bucks. I definitely recommend you do so. Go to the show notes, jessicalfisher.com, click on podcast to get to the show notes. And there will be my link tree. You can, there, any link I talk about is going to be there. So I definitely recommend you getting a copy of this, but this podcast and last week's podcast, this is like a Cliff's Notes. So like the, you know, like the bolt, like the you know the meat of the information is what I'm trying to get over and across to you on the podcast. So last week we talked about number one being positivity, so important. Number two being patience. Three using rewards to shape behavior, and we went a little bit more into detail into that. We went into detail about all of these. And number four, oh, I gotta switch my hands up. If you're watching the video, you just saw me fumble a little. Number four was about being the protector, and I really, I really went. Into, into detail with that because guys, there was such a huge like brain, like my mind just went, my mind exploded, right? With what I told you about being the protector last week. So if you haven't listened, I definitely recommend you go back, check out that podcast, check out that podcast and then come back to this one so we can finish it off with the last three. So number Five, we're gonna get right right in. Number five, everything on your terms. And here's the thing with everything on your terms. It's okay for your dog to want something. It is okay for you to give your dog something you want. But we don't want our dogs to be like, you know, taking charge of everything in the house. And that's when you get a pos that's when you can potentially breed possess pos if I could talk possessiveness like you know <laughs> when we're talking about resource guarding possession is nine tenths of the law right <laughs> that's just a funny dog trainer joke hopefully hopefully it made you laugh maybe not I don't know <laughs> but with resource guarding we can we can breed possessiveness right when we let our dogs take charge and um, make all of the decisions in the house that can that can breed possessiveness. That can that can breed um, that can breed separation anxiety, right? Because now they are 
they're in charge, but they are like possessive of us, right? Because they, we're, we're, we belong to them and then we have to leave the house. So now they don't know what to do because they're separated from uh, what they control, right? We don't want these. Now I'm not saying this is guaranteed with every single dog. It's not, but these things can happen and I've seen them happen before and it's really unfortunate and it's really heartbreaking for the dog, especially if the pet parent just doesn't understand what's going on and the dog is, you know, taken to a shelter or something. Let me tell you, that's why I started dog training. Well, the very first thing is that I started dog training because I adopted a dog who had separation anxiety. And once I started really diving into it, because I'm the, let me get this done kind of person, let me learn everything I can learn about it and uh, get into this. And once I did, I was like, I was in. I, I knew too much to go back, right? Um, but then after that, it was like, it wasn't just for me anymore. I realized that one of the best things I can do to help dogs and cats and animals in general to not to never wind up in the shelter system to begin with, to never be relinquished to a shelter to begin with, um, because that's important, right? Like, I love. I spent many many years helping and providing support in various ways to rescues and shelters. And I'm like, how can I prevent these animals from ever getting into the shelter? Like that's where I feel like the biggest difference can be made. And once I really started getting into the dog training and I realized that it didn't just have to be for me, this is how I can help. This is how I can help shelters and rescues is by, and, and dogs and cats, is by never letting these dogs and cats um, become relinquished to these shelters in the first place. That's how I got there. But anyway, I digress. Everything on your terms, like I said, it doesn't mean that you are the dictator in your home. It just means that your dog is not, you know, ruler of the land. Your dog is not the dictator of the home, right? And here's the here's the thing: nobody should be the dictator in the home. If you listened to last week, we talked about um, how pack theory was debunked, and thank goodness, thank the Lord, right? Um, because it's just bad science. And also, there are no dictators. There is no alpha. Um, but at the same time. We want to make sure that when we are training, we are training, right? It's it, it's what we are requiring of them. It is what we are requesting of them. And here is the thing: when we use positive reinforcement training, which is the only training I ever um, give or recommend, they are getting rewarded for that. So it's not even like a this is what I'm asking of you and you just better do it because I'm asking you to do it. It's a, it, it, we're using the rewards to shape the behavior, which it was one of the other miracle steps that we talked about last week. So that's kind of in a nutshell, what I'm talking about with everything on your terms. That is number five. Let's move on to number six. Walking builds bonds. And here's the thing, walking are there it's a shame that not all dogs get walked um it, no i shouldn't say it that way there are some dogs that have there are extenuating circumstances in many in some cases where dogs just they can't right and here's the thing where there's a will there's a way maybe your dog can't actually physically walk um or they can't walk as long as you would like to be out on a walk maybe you get a stroller maybe you get a wagon and provide them that enrichment anyway but that's not what we're here to talk about that those are there are exceptions to the rule i just wanted to bring that up because i am not like a you know every dog no matter what kind of person no every dog is different every person just like every person is different every cat is different every sentient being on the planet is a little bit different. You may find some that are very similar, but we're all different and we need to be treated as such. Um, but in general, here's the deal. If you and your dog have the ability to get out there and walk, I highly recommend that you do. Now, there are many different walks. There are ty different types of walks. There are structured walks. There are um, unstructured walks. There are enrichment walks. 
I love letting my dog sniff. And here's the thing, every one, I, I like mixing things up all in one walk because I like starting out with structure, okay? And then I like letting her sniff. This is rewarding for, this is enrichment for her, getting to smell all the smells and figuring out all the different things going on in the neighborhood or in the park or wherever we have, we're going. I love letting her do that. It's very enriching for her. But here's the thing. We were talking about family units last week and in wolves, wild wolf packs. And by the way, in wild dog packs, even more recently, um, there has been research in wild dog packs that shows just how um, similar they are to the wild wolf packs in that um, they act very much as family units. So one of the things that, that these researchers have found in these wild wolf packs, wild dog packs, is that walking together, hunting together, spending that time together is very bonding. And what, as a trainer, um, I've noticed, and other trainers that I have heard from or spoken to have also noticed, is that when a human and a dog walk together, it is a, it's a bonding experience. And we really need to treat it as such. It's not an obligation. It is something fun that we get to do. We get to share an experience with our dog. And that's really the way I want you to start looking at walks with your dog. I want you to, you can have your phone with you because I understand there may be like some emergency situation that you need access to your phone. You're not at your house. Um, you can have your phone with you. I often leave my phone at home when I take my dog for a walk. And that's, you know, if I'm just in my neighborhood and I feel safe doing so, but I put your phone down, right? There is no multitasking to be had at, in this moment. This moment is about you and your dog. Your dog's whole world is you and your home and getting outside of your home to take that walk is so incredibly important for your dog and we need to treat it as such. So be be that person that is in the moment with your dog you know when we think about things we can learn from our dogs living in the moment is one of the biggest things we can learn from our dogs and so i want you to think about that every time you take a step outside with your dog to have a walk like or you know what even if you're not stepping outside even if you are I don't know, maybe you, the weather is bad and you just want to take a walk around your home with your dog, do so with purpose and intention and understand that this is a bonding moment between you and your dog. And that is going to increase your value to your dog when you're in the moment with them. And it's also going to help build and strengthen the relationship that you have with your dog. So that is number six. Number seven is so, all of these are so, like I told you already, I don't know, probably said it like two or three times just in today's podcast, is that these, I had such a hard time narrowing it down to just seven, but here's number seven. Remain consistent. And this consistency is, uh, it applies in so, so many, so many different ways. You need to be consistent in the behaviors of like that you're giving off, the behaviors that you have, the actions that, that, that you are taking. You need to be consistent in the words that you're using for the cues that you're training with your dog. If there are other people in the house, you all need to be on the same page. So if you're asking for a down cue and you're pointing your finger down like this, which I like to do, um, when I ask for, I'm sorry, that was wrong. When I point my finger down like this, it's for a sit. When I do down, it's like, I, if, you're, if you're watching the video, you can see me. Um, I kind of have my hand flat and, and push my hand down. Um, so I like to train with verbal cues and hand signals. That is because my very first dog was deaf. I didn't know she was deaf when I got her, but she was. So I used a lot of hand signals with her, but for me, I still spoke. So I like to train with um, verbal cues and hand signals. So at, like at the same time. So 
um, make sure everyone is being, everyone in the household is being consistent as well. We're not just talking about um, you with your dog, we're talking about everyone in the house. Also needs to be on the same page. I actually just talked to um, a potential client today. I had a, a consult with her and I told her, I said, we really need to make sure that you and your husband are both there um, for the training sessions because we need to make sure everyone is on the same page. And I have had couples in the past who just, one of them was not into it, um, didn't want to be there for the training, didn't want to partake in the training whatsoever. And I was very, I, you know, I've had to be very upfront with them. I said, I will, I am more than happy to teach you any and everything you want to know and help you with your dog. Here's the thing. If your partner is not on board and is not um, being consistent in the same ways that you are with your dog, your dog is gonna get really confused and this is gonna be harder than it should be, but that is what it is and I understand, like this happens sometimes. So if you want me to train you and your husband, that's great. If you wanna train your husband when I'm gone, that's fine too. <laughs> um, I'm here to serve you as best I can but you know, I just have to be upfront with people. That it is what it is. So <sighs> remain consistent. That again, one of those things that is simple but not easy. Simple but not easy. Um, so <laughs> those are the seven miracle steps. I originally called them the seven canine commandments. I'm going back to my notes here because uh, the pet parenting reset which is the podcast you're listening to right now. Um, this is episode number three, so I'm still having to write notes down and make sure I'm telling you everything I wanna tell you. <laughs> uh, so definitely check out the show notes for today's show. Uh, you can get there by going to jessicalfisher.com and clicking on podcast. You'll go to the show notes page where you can get all the links to anything I'm talking about, including the book I wrote. You can get a digital copy for like five bucks and gosh, guys, it is so, so incredibly worth it. Um, I have had so many people, my in-home clients, what I have done with them in the past, and I, I, I need to, I, yeah, I'm getting back into doing some in-home training um, since the move, but if, uh, I'll talk about that in just a minute. What I have done with them in the past is provided them a, co a digital copy of the book before I get to their house to do the in-home training. And I cannot tell you how many times I have gotten to someone's house and they are like, we have been implementing what you wrote in your book because you can read the book. It's like, it's, it's not a long book, guys. I, I mean, this is a, you can sit down and read it in like an hour and a half, or if you wanna break it up, you can do that too. But it's not a long book. I really tried to get to the point so that you can just get the most out of it and get on with training your dog. But I have had so many people tell me, Jessica, we have already been put in, you know, the seven canine commandments into practice in our home. And we have seen such a huge difference with our dog already. I'm so excited to, you know, start the training program with you because we have already had such huge changes in our home. And here's the thing. You do, that's just, that's what it is. If all I did was provide to you these seven canine commandments and you put them in place in your home, you are going to see such drastic improvements with your dog, with the relationship you have with your dog. I mean, with the relationship you have with yourself and, and everyone around you, because if you are changing yourself and providing you know, that positivity and the patience with yourself, by the way, provide these things to yourself, you're gonna be, you're just, I mean, your, you, your, your mindset changes and your life changes. That's how these things work. Um, so definitely check out the book. I also have a free beginner dog training series course. It's an online course. I definitely recommend it. If you haven't already checked it out, uh, again, go to the show notes, jessicalfisher.com, click on podcast, and go to the link tree. The beginner dog training series is a completely free online dog training course it's like 19 videos you can get so much out of it um, i definitely recommend the book first and then the beginner dog training series um yeah definitely check me out on patreon as well we really have an amazing family over on patreon and i hope that you become part of that family on patreon you get extended content exclusive content and 
here's the deal. Like I post things on Patreon. I don't post anywhere else because it is a safe space. We are a family over there. You get so much more wonderful stuff. I, I really hope you check it out and become part of the family. You can also participate over on Patreon, which is what I really, really love. Love the participation aspect of Patreon. So I do hope to see you over there. Please leave a five-star review if you enjoyed today's podcast. If you haven't already left a review on your favorite podcasting network, I hope you do so because when you leave five-star reviews, the podcast network, wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever it may be, can send, you know, recommend this podcast to other people. And that's the whole goal is to help as many people and pets as possible. I'm, I, there are a lot of peas. I'm just noticing all my peas um, popping. Sorry, guys. I also hope you subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button or follow button, depending on the platform, it may be subscribe, it may be follow. Definitely check out the video of the podcast as well. It will be posted on both YouTube and Rumble. So yeah, um, wherever you prefer to get your content, we should be there. I should be there. <laughs> if you really prefer to get, to get your content somewhere that I have not mentioned, let me know about it so that hopefully we can get the content over there for you. Thank you so much for being here with me again, spending your time with me. I hope that I am providing enough value for you that you are thrilled to come back and listen every single week. Thank you again so much for being here. I can't do it without you. You guys are awesome. You rock. I love you and your pets. I can't wait to talk to you next week. Bye. <coughs>